The way railways are being maintained is having to change. From across the industry, there are strong themes I see day to day. Less access to maintain the railway higher performance requirement and tighter cost controls, not objectives that seem to complement each other. One of the ways these objectives can be met is through changing the maintenance strategy to one like risk-based maintenance. Never heard of risk-based maintenance? Heard the term but not sure what it means? Well, by the end of this video, you'll have a full understanding of what risk-based maintenance means and what it involves. We will start by defining risk-based maintenance, what we mean when we say asset, as well as the current maintenance strategies used that the railway is moving away from. Then we'll look in detail at what is needed to form a risk-based maintenance strategy along with its benefits and also its challenges and limitations. Before we dive into the video, let me introduce you to this video's sponsor, Connox. Their mission is to help railway infrastructure owners and maintainers increase reliability and cost efficiency, all with the goal of making rail the prime transport choice for everyone. Connox applies state-of-the-art data science, machine learning and AI to the mountain of underutilized railway data. This data, covering both individual assets and network conditions, holds huge value and can be used to optimize maintenance planning, resource allocation, operations and capacity. As you'll see in this video, Connox's switch really is at the cutting edge of the remote condition monitoring solution. It continuously monitors and analyzes the health of key components, such as the trackbed, crossings and point operating equipment. It then provides real-time insights and feedback to maintainers and infrastructure owners on the optimal time and type of maintenance required while also indicating potential failures before they happen. Click the link in the top right or in the description below to learn more about Connox's solutions and how they're transforming railway maintenance. What exactly do we mean by the term risk-based maintenance? Risk-based maintenance is a strategy that prioritizes assets based on their likelihood of failure and their potential impact on both safety and operations. In this video, I'll be referring to assets frequently. So let's define what that means first. According to ISO 55000, an asset is an item, thing or entity that has potential or actual value to an organization. In a railway context, assets include track components, rails, sleepers, fastenings, ballast, signalling systems, track circuits, interlocking, other train detection systems, structures, bridges, tunnels, stations, platforms, rolling stock, locomotives, carriages, wagons, electrical system, overhead line equipment, substations. Let's look at a real world example of a risk-based maintenance approach. We have two sections of track. Track A is a 100 mile an hour line or 160 kilometers an hour for non-UK US viewers that has 10 passenger trains per hour and two freight trains. Track B is a 20 mile an hour line that sees two freight trains per week. Factors such as the speed, the frequency and the type of train make it clear that track A requires more frequent inspection and maintenance. This is because its levels of usage being a lot higher increase the likelihood of failure while the impact of any issues are also going to be a lot higher. So almost without thinking, you've outlined the start of a risk-based maintenance strategy for these two tracks. Now, let's contrast this with two other maintenance approaches for some context. Reactive maintenance deals with issues only after they occur. It's a fix after failure approach. You might hear this also called fix on failure. This is suitable for less critical components that if they do break is annoying, yes, but not critical. Think of the light bulb in your house. Preventative maintenance follows a fixed schedule regardless of the asset's condition or use. For example, servicing a car every year even if it hasn't been driven. This approach is suitable for critical assets whose failures could be catastrophic. So how do we determine an asset's likelihood of failure and then its impact on safety and operations? To assess the likelihood of failure, we can analyze suitable data on similar assets. Data on failures can be reviewed for patterns and linking those to specific triggers. Data can also be used to determine an asset's actual usage level rather than just an estimated one. Wear and degradation rates can be reviewed to see how an asset's performance decreases over time and between maintenance. Next, the consequences are assessed, both safety related and operational. This includes the risk to people and the impact on railway operations. This process can be undertaken as a risk assessment on the asset's characteristics and role in the railway overall. Mitigating or aggravating factors can also be taken into account for individual assets. These risk assessments in a railway environment will likely take into account factors such as line speed, number of trains per day or hour, train type. This is important as it then leads to the number of people involved in a potential incident. Location, asset age, 
asset condition, asset type, and the asset's history of defects, faults, or other issues. All this data needs to come from somewhere, and it needs to be reliable. Sources can include asset management systems, maintenance and inspection records, operational running plans, track inspection and testing trains, past incident and failure reports could be reviewed for root causes, and then lessons learned from previous incidents. Then it comes down to the money. Ultimately, we must weigh the cost of failure against the cost of prevention. There will be some assets that are so important that if they do fail, the impact is huge. The cost of failure could be in terms of money, this could be loss of income, or it could be in terms of fines, lives, reputation, service delivery, or affected operations. It will be relative to the industry. On the railway, it would be fair to say that at the top of the tree is the life in terms of potential cost but operational does factor in there as well. In many places, there are one set of points at a junction. If they fail, the whole section of the network grinds to a halt. Then there are items like power supplies to signal boxes, which are obviously critical. For these items, the view may be taken that they are maintained to the highest degree, no matter the cost, as the impact of their failure is so huge. Remember, this can be both safety and operational impact. But for other assets, it wouldn't make sense to spend vast sums of money maintaining them because in the event they do fail, the impact is so low. Trains may be able to be routed around or other contingencies available that mean they pose little risk and have a minor impact. I just wanted to take a minute to say that if you're interested in railway engineering, then I have a free PDF guide that you might be interested in. Kant is one of the most fundamental rail concepts and I cover it in depth in my free guide to Kant PDF. You can get your copy at the link in the top right hand corner now or in the description below. Advances in technology are changing how railways are maintained and pushing risk-based maintenance to the forefront. How? The increased amount and accuracy of the data available plus the tools to interpret it quickly and accurately. Remote condition monitoring systems allow for data to be captured in real time on an asset's performance and condition. With advances in sensors and new systems being introduced, the parameters that can be measured and the insights that can be gleaned are increasing all the time. Just a few years ago, you needed to have a member of staff on site with a phone to be able to find out the rail temperature during hot weather. Now, remote temperature sensors can be placed on the rail with one person able to monitor a huge number of sites from the comfort of their office. And that's just a simple example. I did a full video on RCM and how it is changing the game for railway maintainers. You should check it out. There are also train-borne systems used to inspect the track. These trains can take multiple measurements such as gauge, twist, ultrasonically test the rails and analyse the pictures and flag issues such as missing clips and bolts, all while travelling at high speed. Other inspection options are fast becoming available, such as drone or inspection trolleys that can undertake inspections from new angles with increased accuracy and faster than a human with their eye and a gauge. All this data does need to be looked at though, otherwise it's just useless and expensive to gather. AI and machine learning have greatly increased our ability to analyse the data, spot patterns, trends and the triggers. All this is great and interesting, but what is the actual benefit of moving to a risk-based maintenance strategy? In a nutshell, using a risk-based maintenance approach allows maintenance to be optimised to ensure the correct level of work is being undertaken on each and every asset. Through the use of the RCM systems, safety and performance issues can be detected early and addressed prior to failure. Money is saved as maintenance activities are targeted to where they are needed and when. It removes unnecessary work while ensuring assets perform to their required levels. A risk-based approach prioritises maintenance based on the likelihood and consequence of failure. This ensures that assets with higher risk receive appropriate maintenance, ultimately reducing overall failures. This in turn improves the overall service customers get and the performance of the railway overall. There are some challenges and considerations behind risk-based maintenance that you need to know. The equipment required to gather the data, if that's through installing remote condition monitoring, for example, can be costly and take time. Then there is the time and cost in interrogating the data, not just once, but continuously. Then there is the fact that the asset owner has to undertake risk assessments on the asset. They have to make a judgment call on what their acceptable level of risk is both for safety and for the performance of the asset. The process of risk assessment needs to be carried out consistently across the asset class to ensure a common approach. But if things do go wrong, questions will be asked about who undertook the risk assessment and how they came to the conclusions they did. This could be internal from management or external in the worst case, like a court or by the police. Then there is the unforeseen factor. 
there may be a risk or consequence of asset failure that isn't foreseen when the initial assessment is done, that only becomes apparent on failure or when certain circumstances align. In this case, the process needs to be reviewed as part of the lessons learned and assessments updated. Risk-based maintenance is transforming railway infrastructure, helping to optimise inspections, reduce failures and keep costs down. By prioritising assets based on their likelihood of failure and impact, the railway industry can make sure assets are getting the right level of maintenance at the right time. So what do you think? Is risk-based maintenance the future of railway infrastructure maintenance? Or do traditional methods still have their place? Let me know in the comments below. On screen now is a video I think you might like. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe.